Hey guys, Targo Cyclone FPV. We are now doing part three of our uh, Grand Oaks High School Drone Club uh, build uh, for their drone kit. And today, or at this point, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be actually doing the motors. Okay, now I'm going to do one motor and I'm going to show you guys what we're talking about and maybe do two motors in this video. All four are going to be done the same way, but um, just, you know, so that you don't have to sit here and watch me the whole time. Just pay attention to what I'm doing. Um, most important is going to be that we're we did, on part one, we did assembling the frame. On part two, we did preparing your ESC. On part three, we're gonna be preparing your motors and showing you how to measure them and make sure that the length of the wiring, everything is done properly, okay? Uh, but you need to take your time with this one because if you cut your wires too short, you're gonna be spending more time trying to extend the wires and it kind of gets sloppy. So please pay attention to what I do. And if you're building this exact build and you're using this video for this build, then measure them exactly how I do or my measurements will be, they'll work for you. If you're just using this video to help you with your own build, kind of follow the same rules and figure out what your measurement should be or length of wire should be, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and cut to here and there we go. So there's our drone there that we've been working on. And um, right now what I'm doing is I'm opening this Emax motor. Now you may be getting an Emax motor or your kit may have a different motor on it, all right? And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the motor length or the wire length is gonna be sufficient for what we need. Now, for those of you that have the Emax, um, the one thing that you're gonna notice is that the wiring from the Emax motor, depending on the motors, because Emax has done a really good job of not being consistent on their wiring, okay? So let me go ahead and kind of give you an idea. So these wires are going to be, you can see like right out of the box, that we have two different lengths of wires, okay? Emax has this longer wire, and then they have this wire. Both are actually from the factory, neither one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you if you end up with this wire, this is how we're gonna work it. And if you end up with one that is shorter, you're just gonna have to make it longer first. There's no way to tell which one Emax has put in the box that you may be receiving, but I'll do a whole nother video on how to extend your motor wire. But for right now, we're gonna assume that you guys are getting the right length, okay? So if you do get one like this, you need to make sure that you pay attention to the um, direction of the motor. And in this case, if you, look at the, uh, if you look at the arrows here, right? And there's arrows and they're pointing that way, which means the motor's gonna spin clockwise. Clockwise motors are gonna be motors um, four and one. So if you're looking at your drone, motors are numbered one, two, three, four. One and four spin clockwise, two and three spin counterclockwise. So if your arrow is aiming to the left on your Emax motor, it's a clockwise motor, which goes on one and, on one and four. Now, that's not always the case with motors. A lot of motors nowadays are no longer clockwise and counterclockwise, which is basically referring to the threading here. You see, if you have a clockwise motor, your motors out your your prop your, the the fastener on the top is actually going to fasten to the left usually when we turn something left it loosens but in this case it's going to fasten to the left and tighten and loosen to the right and that's because if the motor is spinning to the right the prop the 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 fastener will come loose uh, unless it's turned against the the way that the direction of the um of the motor now in, in in most cases now motors are all one direction and we use locking fasteners which have that little nylon ring on them to hold it in place so that it can be put uh, in any spot. But in this case, we're using the clockwise to go on one and four and the counterclockwise to go on two and three. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take spot one like this and I'm gonna check and see what screws uh, Emacs gives me. Now Emacs has been really good about including uh, a variety of screws in their, in their motors and um, usually what I notice them doing is they will include uh, six, seven, and eight millimeter screws, okay? So I'm actually not gonna open the, um, sorry, and I'm not gonna open the um, six or seven. I just opened the seven by accident, but it's not a screw that I know I'm gonna use because this arm is only three millimeters thick, okay? So if I use a seven millimeter, I'm gonna go so far through that carbon fiber that it's gonna go into the motor <coughs> and then most likely hit the copper uh, on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the six millimeter screw, which is the shortest screw that comes in the Emax setup, and we're gonna go ahead and mount only two of them. And we're gonna do it in such a way to where our motor, our wires for our motor are running down the arm. Now you're gonna need to get a screwdriver that fits this right here. Sorry, let me get that fastened. Just like that. And what you wanna do is just put uh, one in, but don't tighten it all the way because you have to get this situated, okay? And these are my standoffs coming off the ESC. So let's do one and let's get the next one here. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and get two of these 
And what you're looking at right now is when you turn this over, one of the things you want to look at, you see the center here, right? This is completely off center. We want to make sure that this piece fits properly right here, okay? So make sure that your motor sits as centered as possible. And to do that, you're just basically going to slide this around so you get to the center and then if you want you can go ahead and add the third and fourth screw you just don't want to tighten anything until it's a hundred percent to where you believe that that motor is centered okay so once you do that there we go and we're going to go ahead and remember we're only using the six millimeter and even then that can be pushing it but the emax motors have a, a pretty good height um, in there so we should be okay let me make sure that's not, okay so that is motor one and that is a clockwise motor the next thing I want to do is open a counterclockwise motor so that you can see how we're going to wire that one. But the idea here is if you look, this motor is going to run down the arm, right? And we want to keep it safe and we want to keep the wire safe. So we're going to run down the arm and then we're, we're going to turn right about here and we're going to be able to reach the ESC, okay? And I'll show you exactly how that's going to work and we're going to zip tie it. Now, once we do that, it looks like we're actually going to use all the wiring that's on here. All right. So um, you have a choice now, and I'll usually do it, but it's up to you guys if you want to, um, to heat shrink your wire. And it gets pretty cool here because you can use any colors. You can kind of make your drone look really cool. But you want to add heat shrink, especially because this is where we're going to run a zip tie. And I know I'm going to zip tie this really tight. So I'm going to put a heat shrink on here and I'll usually remove the motor. Now that I know I'm gonna use the full length, I don't really need to worry about cutting this one. So I'm gonna use the full motor. And so I'm just gonna see how much heat shrink. See that right there? If I heat shrink this right here, I can zip tie right across and I'm safe, okay? So I am gonna remove the motors when I heat shrink um, only because uh, I prefer, I get a better heat shrink when I do that. So just take the motors off. Now that we know we don't have to cut the, the wires, take the motors off here. And I am going to give you the wire length reference so you have it. In case you do have to cut your wire, I'm going to show you what I find for uh, an easier build, what would be a safe length. Okay, so this wire, it looks like it's about 150. Uh, let's see, I'm going to be way off, I'm sure, but let's just see. So from the, um, we'll measure from the uh, end of the heat shrink because I think that'll give us a better number. But from the end of the heat shrink, right there is going to be 110 okay and then from the bell will be 120 so if your wiring from the bell from the motor itself is 120 millimeters uh, you're going to be in good shape all right so use that as your number as your guide sorry i didn't realize that was in the way there use that as your guide 120 millimeters is what you what now to, in comparison the first motor i open the motor length from the bell is only what is that 80 80 millimeters so i still have to add another 40 millimeters of wire to get it to equal this one okay so use 120 as your as your number and then i was telling you about your screws and i told you you're going to get six seven or eight and if you look at this this is going to be six okay you're not going to measure from the bottom you're going to measure from where the thread starts that's six and that's going to be the screws that we use so to make sure you've got them all right you just stand them up beside each other do whatever okay so here we go. We're going to use 120 millimeter wire. That's right there. We are going to use the, um, uh, we are going to go ahead and put the uh, heat shrink on there. Let me make sure I have this right. And if you got one of our heat shrink kits, then uh, you'll end up with something like one of these colors, okay? So we're going to slide that on there like this. And you're going to feed it down. Sorry, let me do that properly here. Feed it down like this, okay? Main thing is you wanna make sure these wires don't cross, okay? And you'll have a chance to check it again before you heat shrink it, but you wanna stop it now. If you can push it to get on top of their heat shrink just a little bit, go ahead. But uh, this is pretty tight heat shrink, so I, I don't think it's gonna happen. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure it's butted up against theirs, and then press the wire down so that if it is crossed, you're gonna kind of push it around so it goes through. Now, while your motor is sitting there and you know your wires are straight, Keep your finger here so that these don't open up and just hold the heat shrink on there, right? And run it through without burning yourself, please. Just run it through like that, right? And you're gonna see it kind of tighten up. Make sure to get the size as best as you can. Once you're happy with that, press on it to make sure that the wires are straight. Now go from the bottom. Now you don't have to hold it now because it already shrank on the top so it's not gonna cross over anymore. 
Okay, but make sure to go back over it again and then press on it one more time. And what you're gonna see are these little traces of your lines, you see? And it's really nice and clean and it's flat. And you can see here, you've got a little bit of line tracing right here, okay? So with that, we're ready to go ahead and attach uh, our motor one, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put the screw in here and I'm gonna get it. And remember, we're not gonna tighten it just yet. Just gonna kinda get it ready because we have four screws to put in here and it, it's never gonna be uh, set properly in center with just one screw. So just kinda finger tighten that one if you want. Go to the next one and do the next one like this and then go to the next one like this and then the next one like that, okay? And there we go. Now, once you are confident that you are in the center, go ahead and just tighten it down. You're good to go, there should be no problem. So just tighten it, but cross tighten it. Like if you go this screw, then go the one across it. Don't go side to side, okay? Three, and don't you don't have to crank it down till you kill it, just tighten it. There you go. Now, we're good to run one zip tie, and we can now run it on the heat shrink without damaging the motor wire. So for me, I try to go as close as I can to the beginning of the heat shrink. So I'm gonna go right about here, okay? And I'm gonna tighten that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. All right? Because there is a long run, the next thing that you're gonna be doing, and I'm just gonna show you this now, is there's these landing pads, right? And this is, remember I told you to get rid of those little triangle carbon fiber pieces. This is a landing pad. This is much better for your drone to land on. And so you gotta make space for that, right? Uh, because that's gonna go on the bottom. So you don't wanna put a zip tie uh, around that where it's going to go through the center of it or impede its ability to stick to the carbon fiber. So once you put your um, landing pad on, you can always put your second um, zip tie and you can see how they're in the front and the back, but the landing pad, they're not where the landing pad has to stick to it. So that's good. And now you've got two zip ties holding your wire in place, which is perfect, right? And, and you've got your landing pad. And now what you want to do is you just want to route your wires that it's going to be the easiest for you and also keep them protected. So for me, I'm just going to go ahead and run it on the outside like that. And so here's how we're going to do this. That's motor one. And let's go ahead and do a counterclockwise motor real quickly so we can cover that one as well. And I'm hoping that the wires are the right length on this one. But if they're not, I will have to try and see if there's another one. And the answer is they are not. So these are also uh, 80 millimeters. Let me open this set as well and see my luck okay so these are short and as you can see though the arrow on here is turning um, uh, clockwise or sorry counterclockwise so this is going to be for motor two uh, sorry two or three okay now because these wires are short I'm going to show you how we're going to address that now keep in mind that you will need wire to do this next port apart okay so what we do when wires are short let me kind of clear the table here and give you an idea Okay, so when wires are short, we need to extend them. Now, I happen to have some wire to extend with, and um, you're going to need some wire anyway, but I usually, that's why I tell people, keep your wiring from your last builds because a lot of motor wire can be reused, and this happens to be identical motor wire uh, for the Emacs. So I'm going to pull out three pieces of this, and I know that these are 80 millimeter, uh, it's 80 millimeters there, and we need 120. So I need 40 millimeters of wire, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, this is already tinned here, so I'm going to measure 40 millimeters of wire from this end of the silver piece there, which is going to be to right here. All right, so I'm going to cut that. That's 40 millimeters. Then I'm going to go ahead and use the second piece and now measure another 40. Okay, and that's right here. And this little, this little piece that's left, just throw that out because that's not going to help you in any part of your build. And it's kind of too small to really be working with. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and strip the other end of this off because we need to tin these and get them ready to solder together. Okay, and we're only going to use obviously one of these per motor, but since I have two of them sitting here. All right, so to tin these, I'm going to go ahead and dip them in the flux paste. Okay, put that aside. I'm going to twist these up. Get all that flux paste in there real good. Now, I'm not going to get that big helping hands out. I'm just going to grab the small one that's right here. Okay. That's missing an arm, apparently, or a hand. And uh, let me see. I want to use uh, this. So I'm going to tin both sides like this. I'm just going to put it just like that. 
you know what, I have a helping hand that I actually put um, heat shrink on so that the metal wouldn't puncture. And I'd probably recommend you guys do that too, as you can see here. Put heat shrink and shrunk it down so that the metal wouldn't puncture the, um, the wire, the sheathing, right? So there we go. And then I think I'm gonna be able to do this, but I'm gonna put my goggles on it, or my glasses on anyway, because I can't see. So here it goes, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and tin this up. And I need to grab some solder for that. Let me get some off here. All right, so we're just gonna tin both sides. Okay, and it is going to be better if you use a helping hand for this, especially because we're going to be bringing another wire to it. So that one is done. Now we need to get our motor. All right, and we need to get this. I think, uh, there we go. Let me just put this like this. Actually, I should have done it this way. I had that backwards, so let me go like that. Okay. And here is our motor wire here. And we'll just start with wire number one just like that, okay? And what we wanna do is we wanna bring these together, right? So I'm gonna get these as close as I can so that I'm not sitting here having to uh, hold too much and keep them still. I'll get them as close as I can, just like that, all right? And now I'll apply some solder to the, uh, I've already tinned this one, okay? So I'm gonna apply some solder now to the motor wire, just like that. And then I guess if you're worried about getting burned or if the wire's gonna get too hot, You'll just want to be able to grab it with the tweezers and kind of just hold it there and let these two solder together, just like that. And look at that. That is a perfect fit, all right? There's the solder, it's gone all the way through. It looks solid. And now what we're gonna do is I'm going to get some black heat shrink. And these are, we sell these kind, they're actually pre-cut already. Um, you'll find them on our website. Or you can just get some black heat shrink that you have and cut it. And then I'm gonna slide that over just like that. Make sure I've got this protected all the way around. And then I'm gonna heat shrink it. And there we go, that's wire number one. And we're gonna need three wires done for each motor that's short. So we've done one and we've got two more to go. Okay. And make sure it's really uh, secure. All right, that's motor one. I mean, wire one on motor um, on the second motor. So now we're gonna get wire two, which will be our middle wire. Let's go ahead and do that. And again, we're gonna need to tin this up real quick. Let me get my goggles back on. Okay. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tin the motor wire as well. I'm gonna follow the same procedure now. I'm gonna bring these together and I'm gonna use the tweezers and you can make this longer if you need to, just so you have a little bit more control of it without having to bring it too close. All right, and I'm just going to make this one straighter, bring this to it, and we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna lay it up on there like that. Just lay it right beside it, I guess. And then bring the solder iron to it. And with the heat, they're just gonna kind of melt together and there you go. Perfect. So that's number two, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and again, we're gonna saw it, we're gonna heat shrink that wire. Okay, so whoops, so that'll fit up. Okay. Excellent. Make sure to heat shrink all the way around it. Okay, make sure it's fully covered. All right, now I see that I did not tin the other side yet of this wire, so I'm just gonna go ahead and knock that out while I'm, and I think I already put the paste on there, but I'm just gonna tin it anyway, uh, just because I know I'm gonna have to do it at some point, so I might as well knock it out of the way now. Let me go ahead and tin that. Okay. There we go. All right, now I have one more motor wire to go. So let me go ahead and put that on there. And since I'm sitting here right now, I will go ahead and tin this too. All right. And then I do need to cut one more wire now from the wires that I had. So um, let's see, where did I put my motor wires? They're right here. 
Okay, and we know that they needed to be 40 millimeters, so this one is going to be 40 millimeters from the bottom here, which is going to go right there. I'm going to cut that, strip that, strip that sheathing off of there real quick, put that in the flux paste, wind that around, put it in the helping hands, get ready to tin it. Okay, now that that's tinned, go ahead and take my tweezers, bring that in, take my tweezers, and get these side by side, and again, we're just going to solder them together, just like that, heat it up, let it cool, perfect. And now we'll put one more, um, one more heat shrink on there. I'll put it in the helping hands to keep it level again, just like that. Go ahead and put the heat gun on there. There we go. Okay, now we can get our helping hands out of there. And we can go ahead now. We know we're going to be using our... Um, heat shrink right now because this is kind of a thicker wire now that we've had to solder it you may not be able to fit all three wires in at the same time so just kind of fit one at a time here uh, because three of those wires with that heat shrink going through is going to be a really tight fit uh, and it may even be a tight fit to do it like this but I think we're going to be able to get it done I don't think it's gonna to be too bad but you just want to you know you just got to be prepared for that but this is a really 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 tight fit so I'm hoping we can get this to work without any issues but just have patience where am I at on this thing have a lots of patience there we go I think uh, I'm getting it slowly here Okay, I see the wire right there. Let's see if I can knock that. Oh. I'm just gonna have to kind of kind of feed that through a little bit. See if you can make that go through there. I'm gonna kind of give it a little bit of a push here. There we go. Excellent. And that's what we wanted to do. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat shrink this down. We've got all the wires in there. We want to follow the same rule and make sure that it is um, even, right? So run this here, heat shrink this down just like this. And then when that part's done, make sure to press it down. Hey, babe. Hi. That's my wife. She just got home. Hello. How you doing, honey? Is it cold outside? Yes, it's getting very cold. Is it? All right. I'll be done here in just a minute. Okay. Love you. Love you. All right. So let's do that and that. And now that we've got these straightened out, okay, now we've got our counterclockwise motor and our clockwise motors. And you can see how we extended the wires. Let's go ahead and fasten that down and we can make sure it's the same. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do, um, let's just do motor uh, three. So we'll just be basically doing the back motors. Let me go ahead and get all these parts together, all this stuff out of the way, and make sure to clean up your bench and throw your trash out. And as always, save your wiring, because as you can see now by this video, uh, sometimes you're gonna need it, right? All right, so let me get this ready. We don't need these long screws, all right? That's not gonna help me. What I want to do is open up the shorter screws, which in this case is, I can barely see this. It's not that one, it's this one. All right, so let's take out the, oh no, that's not it. Maybe it's this one. Yeah, okay, so let's take these out. Those are our six millimeter screws. And let's go ahead and get to fastening this motor. 
and then we'll go ahead and do the um, soldering real quick and then you guys can finish the other two because they're going to be identical all right so whatever i've done here now we've done both types of motors you guys can just continue and finish the other two you don't have to watch me because we are already 25 minutes into this and uh, i don't want you guys falling asleep on me so here we go And remember guys, you don't tighten it down to your sure that your motor is center. And at this point, this does look center. So we're good there. And now we're gonna do our two zip ties and our one landing pad to make sure our zip ties are right. So there we go, okay. See how uniform everything is? We try to keep everything as uniform as possible. I do not like things that are not uniform. Um, so, you know, you want, you want your, your quad is very much dependent on balance. So get used to putting everything and uh, balance properly. And it may seem insignificant, like the distance between zip ties, but if you become strict enough on that, that or disciplined enough on that, then the rest of it will be very easy for you and it won't seem so monotonous, okay? So um, that's one zip tie. And now remember, we're gonna get our landing pad, which you'll have in your kit. Let me grab one here. I'm gonna place this one right to the edge of this zip tie, just like that. Okay, place that down. Now I'm going to go get the other zip tie, turn this over like that, run this one underneath, and there we go. Okay, so now, remember we want to be on the edge, there we go, of our landing pad, and just tighten it down. Look at that, you have a very uniform, I mean everything looks very uniform. The wire should be close to the same length, everything looks good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're gonna solder these wires very quickly so I can show you exactly what we're doing, all right? All right, so here it goes. And I'm gonna turn this quad so that I can do it, and since, since, the quad, since the board is already mounted to the frame, this should be pretty simple, all right? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tweezers and uh, so we don't burn ourselves, and we're going to drop a little bit of solder on each of these wires. Now, do not do it over the board because solder tends to kind of fly off a little bit, so just add a little bit on there because the solder that comes from the factory does not melt as quickly as the solder that um, we've recommended, which is the Kester 6337. So just put a little bit on there on each one, okay? Now, the wires on here are very long and they don't need to be that long. So my, my uh, advice to you is to take the wires and cut half of it off, okay? Just like that, because the one, and they're gonna go flying, so be careful when you cut this, but you do not need long wires here because the worst thing that happens is they touch another component on the board and it's messed up. All right, now that these are short, you can see them in comparison to what, uh, well, these ones are already cut because I did those, but in comparison to what comes from the factory, and I can just grab a motor here, look. This is from Emacs, okay, and this is what I've done. So if you see the difference, it's at least half, all right? You don't need them this long, so make sure to cut them, all right? All right, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go, you have the outside motor and the, I mean, the outside wire, which is the wire to the back, and you have the inside wire, which is the wire to the center. So the inside wire is gonna to go to the inside um, pad on uh, motor one, which is M1 right there, and this is motor one. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna just nicely bring our wire and hold our um, soldering iron to that, and just hold it there, all right? And if you don't feel like you like the connection, then once you've got it held there and it's, it's fastened, I just put a little bit more solder on it. Now it may come off the pad, so be careful. But what you can do is you can hold that on there and you're gonna get them, oh, hold on, let me, sorry. I lost my grip on my tweezers here. But what you'll do is you'll just go ahead, hold it on there. It'll melt right in, you don't have to press hard. Okay, and there you go. So there's one pad. And again, do not press down hard because what you'll end up doing is burning through the solder and you'll end up spreading these uh, the, the wires apart. So just kind of gently put it on there and it will melt the solder and melt into place on itself. Okay, there's two, and it's, it's not a very long process, so let's count here. One, two, three, four, five, maybe five. I would say four to five. Let me, let me put that back where I want it, right there. Okay, so there's our soldering, and everything is, let me look, and everything's good. I wanna kind of put a little bit more solder on these, um, 
I think they need just a little bit more. So let me just do that real quick. All right, so now let me get that in place. There we go. Okay. And everything is now in place and properly done. And you can look at it and it looks really nice and clean. So now we'll turn this and do the other side. All right. And the same thing's going to apply here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get prepared to, we got our outside wire, which we're going to do first because we're never going to go soldering crossing over wires. So let's do our outside wire first and I'm going to add a little bit more solder to this here so that it'll melt a little bit easier. I'm not sure what's going on with my solder tip here, but some of the solder, oh, that's not, that's wrong. This is it. I don't know what that metal piece was, but that wasn't solder. This is solder. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead, get that ready just like that. And there we go. Okay, it's our first wire. Go to our middle one. Do our second one here. Okay. And then we're going to go to our outside wire, our third one. I'll put a little bit of solder right there. And then turn it in and get this on there without any issue. Okay, and there we go. And now that our soldering is clean and done right, we can begin to just bring the wires in and just making it look very organized, okay? So that's one. And that's two, and we should have almost a mirror-like layout for our, our wires, which we do, all right? So I'm very happy with this right here. This looks great. Now you, what you wanna do is you wanna repeat that for the other two up here, okay? Exactly the same. I mean, don't forget, just look at the arrows on your motors. You have one arrow that is right here, and it's pointing that way, so this is clockwise, so that'll be one and four. Then you have another arrow, which is over here, and it's pointing that way, so that's counterclockwise, so that's gonna be three and two. Run everything exactly the same. The measurements are all the same because this is an export, so this is gonna be the same distance to here as it is to here. It's not a stretch deck. So even if it was, all the distances would be the same. That's what the balancing is all about. And so once you do that, guys, you're gonna end up with, and we'll come back and do um, uh, uh, part four, which will show you exactly what the motors are gonna look like because we're gonna start going onto the flight controller. So once you're done with this, you're done with the ESC, all right? So then we're gonna go onto the flight controller. All right, guys, if you have any questions, make sure to hit me up by sending me an email to target cyclonefpv.com. Please make sure to support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. There's those things, whatever you're looking at, all right? And uh, other than that, that's it. A little message to you. Be safe, fly safe, spend time with your family. You never know how much time you may have. God bless, guys. You all take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.